Yeah, so like what we've done up at Akatara is we've done vertical stria and then we've also done schist. I think that looks amazing. That house is looking awesome, really looks the part. Cladding, well, the boys are cladding. Yeah. It's a cladding kind of day. We're on the central Abaha rear lot subdivision. We just passed our pre clad inspection. Let's go down and have a look. Go. Cool. Okay. So this is the stack of James Hardy Linear Weatherboard, very traditional product. We've talked about how the front house, the older existing house, is an old weatherboard style. And so it makes sense for the back house to match that and it goes horizontally and it kind of overlaps each one and that's how weatherboard works. So we set up a cutting station, hooked up to the vacuum cleaner. The guys will also be wearing masks. See this line here? So we go around and shoot that line the whole way around and then we build up what's called a story rod. Wherever the first board is here in relation to that line we can check it on that corner there and that corner there and that back corner there and that's how we keep our boards even as we go around the, the whole house. Oh yeah, cool. Nailed it. Here what we're doing is working out where the window head height is going to be and we've worked our boards down from there. But the key is that all of these boards are in relation to this Darden line so that the whole way around the house, the heights are even. We're also using a plastic can strip. Gets that first board sitting nice and mint and that all goes flat against the wall. And that's your finished product along the face there. You can also get what's called a shiplap where the boards overlap so they're all flush. And then there you've got like a little scallop that they interlock into each other. I prefer the overlap or what's called bevel back, uh, just a little bit more robust. If you're going for weatherboard, you might as well make it look like weatherboard. Some types of cladding that we would use here at JNK is stone, brick, this is a fibre cement product. We also use a timber weatherboard. We're using plywood, board and batten on one of our jobs down in Lower Hutt. The two main vertical fibre cement ones we'd use is James Hardy Linear Oblique, James Hardy Stria, and they both basically just have slightly different finishes and slightly different looks. What I chose on the section nobody wanted is a vertical linear oblique and I went for a skinny wide random pattern. And then I also chose a natural timber product for about a third of the cladding. And I went for a traditional bevel back weatherboard with a natural stain. The trend for dark colours is why you would choose a fibre cement product over a timber product. So timber is great, it's a natural product, it's been around for years, but you can't paint it the dark colours that are on trend right now. So if you're going to go dark, you have to use a fibre cement product like James Hardy. So it's definitely not a requirement to have two types of cladding. On this house here, the whole job is being used with horizontal linear. In general, most of our builds will have at least two claddings, some of them three, and it just depends on the style of home you're building, where you're building, what look you're trying to achieve. I think it's a good principle to have two types. Yeah, so like what we've done up at Akatara is we've done vertical stria and then we've also done schist. I think that looks amazing. That house is looking awesome, really looks the part, and the schist stone kind of like brings the whole thing back to nature and like really grounds it in to the area. So if you're on a budget, I would recommend the Hardy's products, the Linear, Linear Oblique, Stria. I would recommend Timber Weatherboard. They're all kind of give or take the same area. The next thing you could do to upgrade that 
is go for larch. You could go for cedar. Red cedar is more expensive. Right now it's about four times the price of other options. You could do the schist or brick. Another reason people would choose brick is because once you put it up, you don't need to paint it ever. It's low maintenance for its entire lifespan. Whereas weatherboard, whether it's natural or fibre cement, is going to need to be painted or stained. If you're staining something, think about the fact that you're going to have to do that every year or two. So the last thing they'll do is see we've marked where the studs are and once we've tapped them all up they'll go through, drill them, nail them, punch the nail off, then it's ready for paint. Supply is really a big issue now. There was times last year like that at Katarawa house we swapped out the cedar because there was just no logs coming into the country and they couldn't guarantee us supply. It sounds like on all line items supply is catching up but I think the key is you need to decide what you want and lock it in early and just stick with that, commit to it, get that stock on site and then you, you're guaranteed you're good to go. I personally love timber so I always look to add a bit of natural timber if I can. I think though it really depends on the style of house you're building, where you're building, the look you're trying to achieve. I could have my favourite, you could have your favourite but you've got to align it to what you're actually trying to do. Yeah. You want to point to it? What have we got here? 